A British court has rejected attempts to keep the founder of whistleblowing website WikiLeaks behind bars, and he can now leave prison on bail. Julian Assange will have to stay in the UK while a decision is made on whether he should be extradited to Sweden on sex charges. Let's now cross live to RT's Laura Emmett, who's in London. She's got the details for us. So Assange was eventually released on bail. What's next then, Laura? Well, bail has been agreed, that's right, Bill, but the reason that we're still standing outside the High Court here in London is because we haven't seen him yet. Uh, what will happen next is that he will be released, we hope, tonight. Um, he will be uh, then staying with a friend of his, uh, the media's calling it mansion arrest, because he'll be staying in quite a large house in Suffolk with one of the founders of the Frontline Club, the club for journalists here in London. Uh, he will have to wear an electronic tag. He will also have to report to a local police station every day and he'll be subject to a curfew. But we understand that what the delay is now is that the court is not content with having people like the journalist and author John Pilger, the socialite Jen, uh, Jemima Khan, uh, agreeing to put the money up for Julian Assange's bail. They actually want to see that money. So essentially what we understand is happening now is that these people who have guaranteed this money are now being found uh, wherever they are in the, in, in the country. Then they have to go down to to their local police station and say yes we agree to put the money up for Julian Assange's bail uh, and here it is basically uh, now to talk more about what's going to happen next and what the implications of all this are uh, Paul Whiffler from the uh, EU referendum campaign is here with me um, now Paul let's let's just talk first about this bail um, how normal is it that they would have to see the color of people's money well if if that's the case and and obviously this is the rumor mill running at the moment but if that's the case that would be fairly unprecedented um, obviously, it is a large sum of money, um, somewhere in the region of $400,000, we think. Um, but, uh, you know, it would be fairly unusual. Having said that, he isn't a British citizen. He doesn't have ties to this country. So I assume that they are the, the, the people who are British citizens who are standing this money are being asked to, to make it very clear that, that, that they have the money available in, in a form to satisfy the court. That's what we think, anyway. But why would that be specifically in this case? Well, I think it's, it's because it's a very high-profile case. Um, clearly, now, the, the judge is satisfied that he's not a flight risk, but I think they're just um, dotting the I's and crossing the T's to make absolutely sure that they're not, uh, you know, caught on the hop, so to speak. And there are people, certainly uh, supporters of Julian Assange, who are outside the courthouse today, who are calling this a backdoor extradition. Essentially, they think that he will, they will try to extradite him to Sweden and then on from there to the US. You, I understand, are, are one of those who suspects that that might be the case. But you're also linking it to another extradition request that's come directly from the US, the case of Gary McKinnon, who the hacker, the hacker who uh, the US wants to, to put on trial for hacking into Pentagon computers. Talk me through that. Well, I think... I think um, if it doesn't take too much uh, it, looking at the case of Gary McKinnon to see that, uh, you know, with a, a direct extradition request from America, the British courts do not just pop someone on a plane at the first uh, thing. They, they want to see the evidence, uh, they want to understand the situation that's going on, and they want to make sure that the, the rights of that person are protected. Uh, the problem is in this case with Julian Assange, it's not the Americans who are directly asking for his extradition it's the Swedes on a different case um, something which I believe is not a criminal offense in this country um, but it, it wouldn't even matter if it were a criminal offense in this country under the European arrest warrant which is what the Swedes are using um, the British court is not allowed to look at any evidence it's not allowed to see witness statements it's not allowed to take account of any of these factors um, if they filled in the form correctly they're just supposed to send him off to Sweden um, and I believe the very first delay was because a mistake had been made in filling out the form um, and this is what worries us that uh, you know we have very high standards of justice in this country very uh, high burden of proof and I think you know we can be proud of, of how the Gary McKinnon case has been conducted but I'm rather worried and quite a few people are rather worried that this may be the Americans looking for a different route to get their hands on him because last time 
time we failed to just um, de de you know deliver um, Gary McKinnon and uh, you know at the European referendum campaign we're particularly worried about this business that any country in the European Union can send through one of these uh, European ar ar arrest warrants I mean we, we found it on the internet yesterday and you know it really is very simple to, to fill out um, it doesn't allow for any discussion of the evidence um, and then you know we're supposed to just deliver up uh, whether it's a British citizen or, or a, a foreign national like Julian Assange we're supposed to just deliver them up to the justice system in that country now I'm not saying anything directly against the Swedish justice system um, there are other countries in Europe where you know I am happy to criticize their justice systems openly but what worries me is that the British government are being asked to do essentially uh, a, a sort of um, a menial task for the Swedes and our justice system is not allowed to uh, take any into account whether it's a crime in Britain whether the evidence is sufficient um, and it, we're just supposed to package people up and send them off and this has been happening over and over again um, you know we have Andrew Simeou he's now after 11 months he's not in a Greek jail anymore but he's still in Athens on bail no sign of a trial and we get very upset in Britain over the difference between 28 days and 42 days when it comes to bringing people to trial but in a lot of these other countries there are no limits they can go as long as they like and that's what worries us frankly well Wiffin, thank you very much and of course this brings the uh, European arrest warrant into the spotlight for you so this must be an important case for well, you it's, it's a very important case because I think for the first time people will see and understand just what a bureaucratic thing the European arrest warrant is and we're gonna have to leave it there I'm sorry about that we're gonna have to cut you off thank you so much for joining us what's gonna happen next is that uh, Julian Assange will be back in court on January the 11th uh, to fight his extradition. Laura, thanks very much indeed for that. That's uh, RT's Laura Emmett reporting live from London.